I was invited to write a, a chapter for the Columbia history of the 20th century on exploration. And I hemmed and hawed, and I finally agreed. I was going to make a grid of all the most expensive things civilization has engaged in. And look at how much it cost and what they did to get the thing paid for. And I thought to myself, if we're going to send people to Mars, I find that on the grid and find out what motivated the people to pay that. And then we could learn from the history of civilization. And when I did this exercise, I arrived at only three drivers that enabled a nation to commit large sums of money. One is obvious, war. People will spend almost any amount of money to not die. The Apollo program, initiated out of fear of the Russians. The Manhattan Project, huge diversion of funds in the middle of the Second World War by the United States. What's number two? This is not as common today. Used to be common, praise of deity or royalty. From that, you get the pyramids, and you get Versailles, you get like cathedral building in Europe as an activity. The third, another obvious one, but it's a total of three, promise of economic return. There you get Columbus and Magellan and Lewis and Clark. There's no end of this list. So what this comes down to is, I don't want to die, and I don't want to die poor. That will invest in practically anything. Picture this. The year is 1958. The world is in the throes of the Cold War. Two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, are locked in a battle of ideologies. But this isn't a battle fought on land or sea or even in the air. This is a battle fought in the vast expanse of space. The stakes, technological superiority, geopolitical dominance, and the very future of humankind. In this high-stakes race, a new player emerges on the American side. NASA. This is the story of NASA's meteoric rise, its subsequent fall and its transformation into a new role. It's a story of ambition and innovation, of politics and power, of dreams and disappointments. So strap in and prepare for liftoff as we embark on a journey through time and space to uncover the true story of NASA. Let's journey back to the late 1950s and 1960s. A time of change, a time of tension. The world was in the grip of the Cold War. A silent battle fought not on the battlefields, but in the corridors of power, in the laboratories of scientists, and in the vast expanse of space. The United States and the Soviet Union, two superpowers with diametrically opposed ideologies, were locked in a relentless competition for global supremacy. This was a battle fought not with guns and bombs, but with rockets and satellites, with technology and innovation. In the midst of this geopolitical chess game, a new player emerged on the American side. NASA, the fledgling space agency. Born out of the National Aeronautics and Space Act of 1958, NASA was America's response in this new battlefield. But its early successes were not purely a product of American ingenuity. In fact, they were significantly influenced by German engineering, particularly through the work of Werner von Braun, a former German rocket scientist. Von Braun was brought to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip, a secret program that recruited German scientists, engineers and technicians, some of whom had been members of the Nazi party, to work for the US after World War II. Despite a past steeped in controversy, von Braun's expertise in rocketry was instrumental in propelling NASA's ambitions from mere dreams into reality. This merging of minds from both sides of the war laid the foundation for what would become NASA and set the stage for the space race that would follow into the 1960s. The goal was clear yet audacious, landing a man on the moon. The stakes were high, the challenges monumental. The moon, that celestial body that had fascinated humans for millennia, was no longer just a distant object in the night sky. It was a destination, a symbol, a prize to be won in this high-stakes race. The moon landing, when it happened on July 20th, 1969, was hailed as the pinnacle of human achievement. The world watched in awe as Neil Armstrong took that historic first step on the lunar surface, uttering the immortal words, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
But this was more than just a scientific achievement. It was a political victory, a powerful statement to the world that democracy and freedom could triumph over totalitarianism. But the moon landing was just the beginning. NASA had grand visions that extended far beyond our lunar neighbor. They dreamed of establishing bases on the moon, of sending manned missions to Mars, of exploring the outer reaches of our solar system. They envisioned a future where space travel was not just the domain of highly trained astronauts, but was commonplace, a part of everyday life. They dreamed of a time when humans, not just rovers or satellites, lived and worked among the stars, conducting research, mining resources, and perhaps even establishing colonies. This was a time of optimism, of ambition, of seemingly limitless possibilities. It was a time when the impossible seemed possible, when the sky was not the limit, but just the beginning. It was a time when NASA and the nation it represented reached for the stars and dared to dream big. The Mercury and Gemini programs, precursors to the Apollo missions, tested the limits of human endurance and technological capability, setting the stage for the moon landing. The Voyager missions launched in the late 70s sent back stunning images and invaluable data from the outer planets and beyond, expanding our understanding of the universe. But as the embers of the Cold War began to cool, so too did the fervor of the space race. The intense rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union, which had once propelled humanity to the moon, began to wane. The public's gaze, once fixed on the stars with a sense of awe and wonder, began to shift back to Earth. The grandeur of space exploration, the thrill of the unknown, the dream of a future among the stars, these began to fade into the background, replaced by more immediate earthly concerns. NASA, once the darling of the American public and the envy of the world, found itself in a precarious position. The agency, which had once commanded a staggering 4.4% of the federal budget at the height of the Apollo program, saw its funding dwindle. Today, NASA's budget is a mere fraction of the GDP, a far cry from its heyday. This drastic reduction in funding was a stark reflection of the shifting priorities of the nation. The space race, once a matter of national pride and global supremacy, was no longer at the forefront of America's agenda. The once mighty space agency, which had once stood at the pinnacle of technological innovation, was reduced to a shadow of its former self. It struggled to maintain relevance in a world that seemed to have lost interest in the stars. The grand visions of lunar bases and manned Mars missions, once seen as the next logical steps in space exploration, faded into the realm of science fiction. The ambitious projects that had once defined NASA were replaced by more modest, practical missions. The agency, once known for pushing the boundaries of what was possible, was now seen as playing it safe. The public's interest in space exploration once a unifying and inspiring force, waned. The moon landing, once hailed as the pinnacle of human achievement, was now a distant memory. The excitement and anticipation that had once surrounded each launch, each mission, each new discovery, were replaced by indifference. Space, once the final frontier, was now just another news item, lost among the noise of the 24-hour news cycle. NASA, once a symbol of American ingenuity and ambition, was now seen as a relic of a bygone era. The agency, with its daring missions and groundbreaking discoveries, was now struggling to capture the public's attention. The heroes of the space age, the astronauts who had risked their lives to push the boundaries of human knowledge were replaced by new heroes of the digital age. The space agency, which had once led humanity's charge into the unknown, was now struggling to find its place in a world that had moved on. But NASA, despite its diminished stature, refused to fade into obscurity. It adapted, it evolved. No longer the trailblazer of space exploration, NASA took on a new role, a facilitator. It began to fund private companies, turning to the likes of SpaceX and Blue Origin to carry the torch of space exploration. These private entities, unburdened by bureaucratic red tape and driven by visionary leaders, began to achieve what NASA could not. They brought innovation and a fresh perspective to the field, reigniting the public's interest in space. They dreamed big, proposing ambitious projects like colonizing Mars and mining asteroids. And NASA, in its new role, was there to support them, providing funding, resources and expertise. This transformation was not without its challenges. 
the shift from a government-led model to a public-private partnership model required a significant change in mindset, both within NASA and among the public. There were doubts, criticisms, even resistance. But NASA persevered, driven by the belief that this was the best way forward for space exploration. The results of this transformation have been nothing short of remarkable. SpaceX, under the leadership of Elon Musk, has revolutionized the space industry with its reusable rockets, drastically reducing the cost of space travel. It has also achieved several firsts, including the first privately funded spacecraft, Dragon, to dock with the International Space Station, ISS, and the first crewed mission by a private company to the ISS. Blue Origin, led by Jeff Bezos, is developing a lunar lander and has ambitious plans for lunar colonization. These companies and others like them are pushing the boundaries of what's possible, just as NASA did in its early days. And NASA, in its new role, has been there every step of the way, providing funding, resources and expertise. It has also continued to conduct its own research and exploration missions. The Mars rovers, for instance, have been exploring the Martian surface, looking for signs of past or present life. The Hubble Space Telescope and more recently the James Webb Space Telescope have been peering into the farthest reaches of the universe, helping us understand its origins and evolution. The International Space Station, a joint venture with several other countries, has been a platform for a wide range of scientific research, as well as a symbol of international cooperation in space. As we stand on the cusp of this new era, let's take a moment to remember the journey that brought us here. The glory days of the space race, the decline in the face of shifting priorities, and the transformation into a new role as a facilitator of private innovation. Each phase of NASA's journey has shaped the course of space exploration. NASA, once the symbol of American ingenuity and ambition, may have seen its star dim, but it has refused to let the dream of space exploration die. Instead, it has passed the torch to a new generation of explorers, innovators and dreamers. It has become the backbone of a new era of space exploration, one driven by private innovation and public-private partnerships. The future of space exploration is bright, filled with the promise of new discoveries, new frontiers and perhaps new homes among the stars. And while NASA may no longer be the one leading the charge, its role in supporting and funding these discoveries remains crucial. So as we look to the stars, let's remember the journey that brought us here. Let's remember the lessons learned, the victories won and the dreams yet to be realised. For the story of NASA is not just a story of a space agency, it's the story of human ambition, of our insatiable curiosity, and our relentless pursuit of knowledge. It's a story that reminds us that even when faced with insurmountable odds, we can reach for the stars and beyond. It's a story that continues to unfold as we write the next chapter of human exploration together. going. We are going. We're going. 